A matrix is in row echelon form if all rows that contain only zeros are at the bottom of the matrix. Also, the leftmost non-zero entry in any row, which we call the pivot, is to the right of every pivot slash non-zero leading entry in the rows above it. Consider this matrix here. Is it in row echelon form? Well, do we have any rows with all zeros? It looks like we have one here. Is it at the bottom of the matrix below all of the other non-zero rows? No. So this matrix is not in row echelon form. What if we switch row two and row four? We get this matrix. Is it in row echelon form? The rows that contain zeros are at the bottom, so we satisfy the first condition. What about this second condition? First, from left to right in each row, where are our first non-zero entries? Well, we have a three in the top row, one in the second row, and seven in the third row. As we move down from row to row, are these leading entries, which we call the pivots, to the right of every pivot above them? One is to the right of three, so no issue here. Seven is to the right of three, but seven is not to the right of one. The pivot or leading entry of our third row is not to the right of every pivot or leading entry in the rows above it. This is not in row echelon form because we do not satisfy the second condition. What happens if we swap row two and row three? We get this matrix. Each of our pivots or leading entries, three, seven, and one, are to the right of the pivots or leading entries above them. Some people refer to this as the stair-step pattern for the pivot slash first non-zero entries of the rows. This matrix now satisfies our first condition and our second condition, and so this matrix is in row echelon form. 